among these are investors, most of them foreign, here to listen to the story of Uganda, also wooed by the Commonwealth Business Council. Government did its job of pitching what Uganda has to offer to the investors. Our government strategy is to carry out those investments that the private sector either cannot or would rather not do on its own. Perhaps the most fundamental point is that Africa's growth story is hardly limited to extractive industries. As many as 200 million Africans will enter the consumer markets, good, consumer markets by the year 2015. But it was the time for the investment attraction champion of Uganda to speak. And when he did, there was no blanket invitation. There was no room for fake investors. In case you are not a poor person, if you are a poor person, please don't waste my time. I've got, uh, I've got enough poor people, I don't want additional ones. But in case you have got some money, good money, and you want to make more money, I can confidently uh, tell you that you can, you can make money here when you come here. Though that was said with a smile, it had a serious history to it. If the government cannot help us, we are going to help ourselves. Because we feel we are tired. We have been thrown out of the shops. Because of the rent, we no longer sell. You find here in Nigina, these sandals. You find them in fake mosquito nets. You find them in fake uh, telephone, telephones, in, in, in SIM cards, huh? in batteries. What should we, as Ugandans, really do? Thus, time has allowed wisdom and boundaries even for the investors. As the president would investment for such areas like iron ore, some existing investors were expressing readiness already. If we have got the rights for exploitation of iron ore, then definitely we are ready. It is actually more apparent that the courting of investors is shifting from generalization to specific people and sectors, underlining lessons learned from years of experience. Samo Setumba, NTV.